Hello friends, Nancy Estepa with Someone Cares. I am here to give you my next video. I wrote down my idea for this one. Where did I write it? Oh, oh, why can't um, our learners solve problems? What makes problem solving so hard, specifically word problems? I can connect to this deeply because I remember being able to go through math classes in school and anytime that I would ever get to a test that would require me to apply problem solving skills to solve word problems, I would always watch my grade in math drop. I usually had a good grade in math like an A or a B, but I would watch it drop down significantly because although I had memorized procedures for um, getting answers, for the four operations that my teacher had taught me and I had practiced till I was blue in the face. I could go through the motions. I never really understood the mathematics until adulthood, but um, <laughs> I thought that's what math was. And so by the time I got to the test and I actually had to apply my understanding of mathematics to word problems, if the word problems did not look exactly like something I did in class, I just didn't even know where to start. So I'm sure that you have seen students struggle with word problems. When students struggle with word problems, it is because it's always for two reasons. A, they don't understand numbers, and you would be shocked to know how many students still don't understand numbers, or B, they don't understand operations. So let's talk about um, those. Those are my first two reasons, okay, why it's hard for students to learn to solve word problems. So first, they don't understand numbers, whether it's whole numbers or fractions. If it's whole numbers, I notice many students um, are not confident unitizing. So once they uh, are thinking about numbers in groups of tens or groups of hundreds and tens, um, they need to be able to count those tens or hundreds or thousands as units, like three thousands, that is three one thousands. And you would be surprised how many students are still struggling with unitizing. I see it in kindergarten all the way through fifth grade. Um, also, if they're not able to flexibly compose and decompose numbers, chances are they don't have a good understanding of those numbers. So keep that in mind. We do need to make sure that we have time in our classroom for students to really play with numbers and to understand how numbers are made, the structure of our number system with that 10 to one relationship. And then the role of the denominator when we're talking about fractions. I know I'm outside, you can hear someone's weed whacking, it's not me. All right, so then the second reason why students are struggling with problem solving is that they don't understand operations, okay? I'm talking about the actions of operations. And a lot of times this happens because teachers um, are doing their best and they are trying to make something complicated like problem solving, which is very complex. They try to make it easy, um, but sometimes they proceduralize it to the point where we're actually unintentionally robbing our students of a lot of the understandings that they should be building as problem solvers. So whether you use, there's all different kinds, you see it all over Pinterest and even Teachers Pay Teachers guys, where students are taught to pull numbers and keywords out of the problem, like more means add, or if I'm eating something, it's takeaway. If you teach problem solving through um, procedural steps or by pulling numbers and keywords, you're probably unintentionally setting your kids up for struggle with problem solving because for every time that you tell a student that a word means to add or subtract or multiply or divide, I can write you a word problem that would use the opposite operation. So instead of focusing on keywords and pulling numbers from problems, what I would recommend is I would recommend focusing on visualizing problems, even sketching out a problem, focusing on the action in the problem. Am I joining, that's addition. Am I separating, subtraction. If I'm comparing two amounts, I can solve that with either addition or subtraction. If I'm working with um, equal groups, groups of equal amount, I'm either doing multiplication or division. So I have to think about what am I doing with those groups? If I'm putting those groups together, I'm multiplying. If I'm sharing things into groups, that's division. You really have to get kids to understand the action of the operation. It gets extra confusing with subtraction and division because both subtraction and division problems can be solved using inverse operations. In fact, um, 
sometimes the most efficient strategies are using the inverse operation, using adding up to subtract, using multiplication to divide. And if we don't really focus on the right things and we try to oversimplify problem solving, which can be complex and messy, but sometimes by trying to oversimplify complex things, we are not giving students that productive struggle that they need to really internalize and understand the meanings of the operation. So keep that in mind. Um, the third, third reason why your learners are struggling to solve word problems is because they are not being exposed to flexible problem solving strategies or all the problem types. So there are many different types of word problems. It's not just unknown start, unknown result. You have missing part problems. You have multi-step problems. You have um, problems with an unknown start, an unknown change, an unknown result. There's several different problem types. And many of these problems would have an unknown at the beginning or in the middle of the problem rather than just at the end. So to solve problems like that, your students need to have a good understanding of how inverse operations relate. They need to understand how they can use addition for subtraction problems, and they need to understand how they can use multiplication for division and vice versa. All of these understandings are important and prerequisites for becoming a fluent problem solver. Um, we can teach these skills in school. We just need to make sure that we understand how to do it. So if you're looking for someone that can help make complex um, problem solving simple without procedurizing and dumbing down the work, just building those kids' brains up, you got to give someone cares a call because this is where we shine. All right. Well, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, please follow and like our page, someonecares.com, and watch out. We're about to start a new group, a new group to help um, both school administrators, educators, and parents make math easy for your kids. We're going to demystify math class. So we hope that when we start that group up that you will join and bring all of your amazing questions so that together um, we can grow into powerful learners that can help our learners become powerful learners as well. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.